this is a day that the lord has made hello everyone welcome to my channel my name is vanessa i have been reading titus in my bible which is in the new testament i happen to just flip through the new testament section and just open whatever wherever it landed it landed on titus i believe that everything happens the way that it should and I believe it is God who is ordering everything. But I do know that everyone has their own belief. And I'm just letting you know I'm a Christian. So my videos are coming from that point of view, first and foremost. Every now and then I feel like sharing actual scripture, which I try to post on Sunday. It's not consistent because I don't feel compelled to share all the time. The reason Titus came at such an important time is because on Tuesdays, soon, I want to start posting Transformation Tuesday type videos. Again, coming from a Christian point of view, it will be giving my perspective, my life experiences, sharing with people how to improve your life, find purpose, to excel. It will mean whatever it is supposed to mean to the person who's watching it at the time. That's what I want for it. So Titus talks about appointing elders who love what is good. A good elder is blameless. They're faithful to their partner. They're obedient children of God. It talks about an overseer who manages God's household must also be blameless, not overbearing, not quick-tempered, not drunk, not violent, no dishonest gain, must be hospitable, loves good, self-controlled, upright, holy, and disciplined. Chapter 1 verse 5 through nine and then verses 10 through 16 it speaks about rebuking those who fail to do good this is where i struggle because i'm a loner to begin with and the reason i'm a loner is because there aren't many that i feel relatable to i know that no one is perfect i know that there is no perfect relationship, no perfect pairing. I just struggle highly knowing that the Bible is my foundation in everything I do. Rebuking those who fail to do good. Okay, this is speaking to me. Because it says people who are rebellious. They're full of meaningless talk and deception. They must be silenced because they are disrupting whole households by teaching things they ought not to teach. And that for the sake of dishonest gain. It says Crete's own prophets said Cretans are always liars, evil brutes, lazy gluttons. The saying is true. Therefore rebuke them sharply so that they will be sound in the faith and will pay no attention to Jewish myths. To the pure, all things are pure, but to those who are corrupted and do not believe, nothing is pure. In fact, both their minds and conscience are corrupted. They claim to know God, but by their actions they deny him. They are detestable, disobedient, and unfit for doing anything good. You know what? In the Bible, it is straightforward. You have to have tough skin to read this. Because if this is who you are, it is painful to hear. And it is difficult to recognize and change. Again, I'm not perfect. I know that. The part that I really want to spend most of the time on is in chapter 2. Doing good for the sake of the gospel. It says that... You 
must teach what is appropriate to sound doctrine. Teach the older men to be temperate, worthy of respect, self-controlled, and sound in faith, in love, and endurance. It is speaking to whoever is reading when it says you. If I keep silent, I'm not doing good for the sake of the gospel. When I was growing up, <laughs> my parents did not open the door to anyone who was coming to share scripture because they were not Catholic and I grew up Catholic. I grew to think it was wrong to spread the word of God. My, um, I could go on with more stories about growing up, but I'm not going to. But what I know now is that we should spread the word of the gospel, the word of the Bible. We cannot keep silent. We cannot keep quiet. We cannot keep it private. I'm not saying I'm going out and going door to door. I'm not a salesperson. I do not have an ounce of sales in me. But that is why I have this channel because if you choose to listen, that's your decision. I'm not forcing it, it's your decision. I need some water. It also says, teach the older women to be reverent in the way they live. Not to be slanderers or addicted to much wine, but to teach what is good. Then they can urge the younger women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled and pure, to be busy at home, to be kind, to be subject to their husbands so that no one will malign the word of God. And likewise, encourage young men to be self-controlled in everything, set them an example by doing what is good. In your teaching, show integrity, seriousness, and soundness of speech that cannot be condemned, so that those who oppose you may be ashamed because they have nothing bad to say about us. Mm, what about us? What about us? What I read is, if you're doing good and being obedient as a Christian person and you go out to be an example, no one has anything bad to say about you because you're doing good. That's my interpretation. Please put in the comments what you're thinking. It also says, teach slaves to be subject to their masters in everything, to try to please them, not to talk back to them, and not to steal from them, but to show that they can be fully trusted, so that in every way they will make the teaching about God our Savior attractive. Now that paragraph I am really struggling with. Is it really talking about a slave? Am I a slave? Am I a slave to what? To who? The grace of God teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age while we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. So we should encourage and rebuke with all authority. Do not let anyone despise you. Scripture is so confusing to me. It appears to be contradictive to me. I struggle a lot to understand what this is saying and I have been in Bible study groups you're listening to the opinion of a human person who does not know Christ who does not think like Christ it doesn't matter how many Bible studies I could possibly be in and from whom is the leader of that Bible group or who makes up the Bible group this is my struggle I will never really know the intent of these words until it's my time to face Jesus Christ. 
All we can do is do our best to follow, to follow what is in here. And I am very curious to know if anyone wants to comment on any of, I am curious to know what, how others perceive this. It doesn't mean it's gonna change my mind, but I am curious to know because if several people have the same interpretation then it could be possibly what the intent is. And sometimes I think I'm talking so much gibber. It's like, okay, what is going on? Let me, let me give an example of what I feel is contradictory. One of the Ten Commandments is said to love thy neighbor. But then here, what if you're your neighbor is failing to do good. Can you love them and rebuke them at the same time? That's my question. Can you love thy neighbor and rebuke them at the same time if they fail to do good? I'm just going to end it there because that's like just dropping the mic. I do hope whoever this video attracted that you will comment and that this was interesting and that you could look at my other scripture videos and comment as well if if you'd like if you have the time i would appreciate it y'all thank you for listening to my thoughts and me read titus new testament in the bible i love you guys Remember today is what you make of it. Please like, subscribe, comment, comment, comment. If you do nothing else, I would love a comment. And um, I will see you next time.